Thank you so much, and good morning. I'd like to begin with addressing the people who were impacted by the derailment in East Palestine. On behalf of the NTSB, we are so sorry for all that you're going through. Please know that the agency is committed to conducting a thorough, independent, and transparent investigation of this derailment. We'll issue safety recommendations to prevent similar tragedies from reoccurring, including urgent safety recommendations, which we can do at any point if our investigation warrants it. In the next few months, we'll hold an investigative hearing in East Palestine, where we'll include time for community members to provide comments and ask us questions about our investigation. My written testimony goes into more detail on the derailment, and by now, the preliminary facts have been well covered. The bottom line is this. There are no accidents. This derailment, as all accidents we investigate, was 100% preventable. As is the case with all our investigations, we're looking into every factor that could have led to this tragedy. We're looking into the wheel bearing, the wheel sets, the axle, and the rail car, including their manufacturer, maintenance, and inspection, the hot bearing detectors, Norfolk Southern's temperature thresholds for alerting train crews of safety concerns, and their use of real-time monitoring and data trending, and the company's policies, practices, and overall safety culture. We're also looking into the design, maintenance, and performance of the tank cars used to transport hazmat, including the pressure relief devices on the five vinyl chloride tank cars. Emergency response preparedness and communications, the decision-making process that led to the vent and burn, the U.S. Department of Transportation's oversight of rail and hazmat safety, and so much more. I know that there are a lot of questions about our investigation, and I will provide what I can today. I also know that Congress is eager to improve rail safety more broadly, so I offer the following five issues for your consideration. First, the definition of high hazard flammable train should be expanded to a broader array of hazmat. And the definition's thres threshold of 20 loaded tank cars in a continuous block, or 35 tank cars dispersed throughout a train, should be eliminated. Second, DOT 111 should be phased out of all hazmat service. They're not as protected as DOT 117 tank cars. Third, people deserve to know what chemicals are moving through their communities and how to stay safe in an emergency. That includes responders who risk their lives for each of us every single day. They deserve to be prepared. That means access to real-time information, obtaining the right training and gear, and having the right communications and planning tools. Fourth, light cockpit voice recorders in aviation, audio and video recorders in the locomotive cab are essential for helping investigators determine the cause of an accident and make more precise safety recommendations. Recorders also help operators proactively improve their safety policies and practices. In the East Palestine derailment, the locomotive was equipped with an inward-facing camera. However, since the locomotive was put immediately back into service following the accident, the data was overwritten. That means the recorder only provided about 15 minutes of data before the derailment and five minutes after. The FAST Act, following terrible tragedies in Chatsworth and in Philadelphia, required Amtrak and commuter railroads to maintain crash and fire-hardened inward and outward-facing image recorders in all controlling locomotives that have a minimum of a 12-hour continuous recording capability. This was extremely helpful in our DuPont Washington investigation. Now is the time to expand that requirement to audio and include the Class I freight railroads in that mandate. In fact, now is the time to address all of the NTSB's open rail safety recommendations, many of which are on our most wanted list. Fifth and finally, as the committee works on enhancing rail safety, I trust that you'll consider the resources that we desperately need to carry out our critical safety mission. Investments in the NTSB are investments in safety across all modes of transportation. To that end, we look forward to working with the committee on this year's reauthorization of NTSB and hope that you will approve the president's budget request for the NTSB of $145 million. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, Ms. Hamadi. Thank you so much.